What is up y'all? Welcome back. Woo boy. We need to catch up a little bit and we have a ton of makeup to catch up over. This is totally unexpected, but one of my affiliate partners, Shop My Shelf or shopmy.us, sent me this enormous box of makeup and skincare from a bunch of their different partners. I have never gotten this much in one box of just like a full face of makeup and more ever ever before <laughs> just like really pumped about it I've already like applied it and used it and it just puts together an incredibly beautiful kind of like instant holy grail kind of face of makeup and I figured we would just kind of chat and hang out and catch up and put on put on some makeup together because there's been a lot going on I just want to hang out so let's go ahead and jump in okay so I have my reverse emulsion on from make beauty but they sent me a bunch of sunscreens. Actually, this stands to screw up the entire look because obviously it's still in the box. So it's the only one that I haven't tried yet, but I do feel like if I'm gonna wear this makeup all day, I do wanna wear an SPF. So this is one from Tulip, I'm sorry, from Bloom Effects. Tulip Dew Sunscreen, Invisible Protection, Vitamins Plus 100% Mineral Broad Spectrum SPF 50. The packaging is like really pretty. Look at that. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Like Tatcha who? Look at that. Shake well, apply liberally. Place your bets now whether this is gonna be wildly fragranced. No fragrance, this is beautiful. Ooh, oh, it feels like the reverse emulsion. <laughs> it has that same awesome silkiness to it which I did realize after using the Make Reverse Emulsion a few times, I was like, oh, you know what this reminds me of? It is one of the super goof sunscreens that they put out, but that one's a chemical sunscreen. The fact that this is a mineral sunscreen, I probably didn't like put on enough, you know, to qualify, but I'm gonna end up with like a pretty good physical barrier on my skin today anyway, because we're going full coverage, but that's so gorgeous comes in glass and it's zinc oxide 12% and it's all non-nano. I'm not sure how much it is, but you get 1.86 fluid ounces and like it basically just doubled down on that beautiful finish that the reverse emulsion puts on my skin. So that's awesome. And then on my lips, cause they're crazy dry, crazy dry. I'm going to actually start with this as my lip prep. So this is the new RMS lip lights. They had their eye lights, they've come out with a few other things and they actually also sent a shade that I don't have in the Redimension Hydro Powder Blush. So I have three of these. I have Hanky Panky, Maiden's Blush, and French Rosé. This is Pomegranate Fizz. Gorgeous, gorgeous, so excited. Actually, if you haven't seen these before, they're really something to behold, just <laughs> in and of themselves. Like that pan, the way that it's pressed in there is so gorgeous. It has a little bit of a shift to it on the skin, but it's very skin friendly, you know, like aging skin or anything like that. It's not super shimmery. Hanky Panky is the only one that has like a little bit of a color shift to it. It actually shifts a tiny, tiny bit like bluey magenta, but all the other ones are just kind of like a soft uh, blurring thing. So anyway, this is in the shade Bare. So that's why I wanted to use it as my lip prep is because it's basically just like a, a pinky clear. I'm just gonna lay that on. It doesn't, I don't think it's got a scent. And if it does, it's not strong. It might just be something slightly vanilla, slightly sweet. It's really, really awesomely thick. It's a good feeling. Mm. They actually sent quite a few RMS products because they also sent this, which I had never tried before. This is the RMS Reevolve Radiance Locking Primer. So it does the same thing that the foundation does. I bought the foundation to review a while ago and I had kind of forgotten what it behaves like. I almost knocked it over. And so I got a chance to use it again to refresh my memory. So we're gonna use this today. We're gonna start with this right here. So yeah. A locking primer, you almost don't need a locking primer if you're gonna get this foundation because it already has a really nice like grip to it. But this is actually like a really nice gel. I didn't show it to you. Hang on, I'll swatch it in a second. I should have shown it to you. But it's actually like not, it doesn't feel silicone-y really or 
you know, like it has those like micro spheres in it that are gonna be blurring. It feels a lot more like a gel weight. And then as it dries down, it gets like a little tiny bit grippy, but it really feels super hydrating, which is very nice. And I'll show it to you. The way that it looks is just kind of a opaque, you know, pinky color, pinky champagne color. It has like, I don't know, I think it's just milky. I don't think it actually has any kind of reflective particles in it, but I am not, I am never the one who like picks that out. It's always somebody else, you know, another creator being like, did you see the little tiny shimmer particles in this? And I'm like, oh uh, no. Anyway, that's really nice. It's got like a, a lovely lightweight tackiness to it, but it's really hydrating. And then I'm gonna mix this because this is not a first impression at all whatsoever. I'm gonna mix the Reevolve Natural Finish Foundation with a little bit of my Victoria Beckham Skin Rejuvenating Primer because it's really high coverage and it does have kind of a matte finish and I want to like maintain some of this lovely dewiness that all of the skin prep has given me, so. I have this in the shade double zero. Hannah wears triple zero. This is actually like a perfect match for me. In fact, it's like a really nice kind of healthy flattering match because it's got a nice amount of neutrality to it, but it is still like not crazy bleached looking on my skin. I feel like a lot of times when I get something that matches my undertone, it's actually too light. And so this actually matches my neck really well, but I am mixing it with a little tiny bit of that primer in the gold variety. And so it might even richen it up a little bit more and probably like, you know, make it a little less opaque. But on its own, if you find a really good match in this foundation, cause I've been like using my foundations lately thinking about what I would recommend for each step in like a, a wedding tutorial, this is a wedding makeup because it has a really lovely on its own kind of like radiant matte finish and it photographs beautifully. You know, it's gonna absorb light just enough that it looks like natural skin on camera and looks really flattering, but you can like thin it out with other things if you, you know, wanna have it in your collection and it's going to behave in a lot of different ways based on like what you thin it out with, but it's super concentrated and can be super full coverage if you want it to be. So that was literally like not even a full pump of it. And I mixed it with that primer and the way that it dries down will kind of be a little bit, I don't know, it'll show my pores a little bit, which is not a bad thing to me, but it's not particularly blurring. But as I wear it, it starts to kind of warm to my skin and I feel like it does smooth itself out a little bit. It's just kind of a, it's an interesting formula. It's not really, I can't really compare it to anything else in my collection. So like I said, that's full coverage. Like <laughs> I feel like I need to get, take it down my neck a little bit because that golden shade and the primer might've deepened it a little bit, but luckily I have this huge necklace on. <laughs> It's gonna reflect red up onto my neck, so that's why it does look like that, but it really locks in. And that's another reason that I would recommend it as like a, a wedding day foundation is because it's super long wearing, at least on me. You can always tell I like just try to face with makeup and wash it off before I go out on camera because I still have like eye makeup goo in my eyes. Sorry about that, that's disgusting. Okay, next I'm gonna go in just with my Kosas concealer. I really feel like since this is such a good like skin tone undertone match that I want to stay right in my complexion shade with my concealer. I don't want to like over brighten. So it's a really good complexion match for me, but it has a nice amount of coverage so it can stand up to that foundation. Cause I still want it to look really natural, you know, when we're done, even if it's going to be super perfected, like not everybody has perfect skin, but you do want to probably end up looking not like you're walking through the door, you know, makeup first. So you might have noticed in my last video, and I'm about to spill the tea here, I'm going from trying to be diplomatic to just needing to vent for a second. So I hope that's okay with y'all. I'm not gonna mention any names here, but a different affiliate platform than the one that sent me all of these had enlisted my help, cooperation, what have you, in a sponsorship that I had alluded to um, in previous videos. And I was really excited to do it. And I feel like it was one of those like quick turnaround kind of things where, you know, I asked for enough time to like try the products and everything. But other than that, like I feel like I was almost doing them a favor in the sense of trying to work on their timeline, even though it was, 
you know, disruptive a little bit. And so I integrated it into a video that I would typically film, you know, if I'm doing a sponsorship, I always want it to be on something where that I can feel like I can like guarantee that my core audience is going to actually like the video. And so I did my due diligence. I turned it around on their timeline and they came back with some edits from the brand four days later. I implemented those edits. And if you're, unfamiliar, I mean, you're probably unfamiliar with like how these kinds of things work, typically, a brand gets one round of edits, but man, they wanted another one. And I was like, okay. And they were already, by virtue of the fact that it's Q1, I know that this is like kind of, I don't know, tedious or whatever, but like we have rates, right? That we charge for certain things. And it's like Q1, uh, January, February, March, it was pretty low traffic. Like I'm not sitting here being like, you know, with my hand out the way that I am when I'm just overwhelmed with requests in like, you know, the holiday season. Like I can be picky choosy with, you know, how much I charge and who I charge it from and whatnot and like turning brands down and stuff around the holidays. But you know, come Q1, I'm like, yeah, my schedule's pretty open, you know, for, for that kind of thing. I'm not just like backed up on, uh, on different sponsorships because I don't like to overwhelm my channel with them, right? And by the time we landed on a price, I did feel like I was being a little bit underpaid, all things considered, but like, you know, it was a brand that I like and I liked the products and I was just kind of excited to do it. And so I was like, whatever, you know? So they come back with their edits and I implement their edits and they come back and I was like, okay, yeah, you know, I'm going to post the video on Monday. And they were like, oh no, no, no. The brand wants another pass at the video after you've implemented the edits. And I was like, okay, I do want, this was Friday. <laughs> like, you know, I had done the video like a week earlier and all this had taken so much time. Pause for a moment. I am going to go in now with the Iris and Romeo Ceramide Multi Balm in Warm Flush. Okay, so Iris and Romeo has not impressed me in the past. I have spent my personal money trying Iris and Romeo products. Their customer service has always been incredible though. They didn't have a huge shade range when they first rolled out in their complexion product. They didn't have anything that matched me. And then when they did uh, expand their shade range, they did send one to me. And I was like, I just don't, I just couldn't vibe with it. It just kind of wasn't what I wanted at the time. I tried one of their brow products and it was not very great. And you know, I was just like kind of over it. Good on them for sending me this because this is, Whew. If you are, if you're a Lila B fan and Lila B is, you know, gone now, they had a really beautiful kind of blush balm that looked like this color. That's like this beautiful kind of bronze with a little tiny bit of like red in it, you know? It's gorgeous. And so I am really, really psyched about it. It looks awesome. It looks awesome. But actually, what's super brilliant about this is I feel like either by very, very happy accident or someone really, really knew what they were doing putting this package together because all of these items that I got come together in a color story that makes so much sense. It's so gorgeous together. And I think it's probably because these are some of the most kind of like quote unquote, like best stab at like universally flattering colors. But let me just say like, I'm included in it. <laughs> they are universally flattering on me. So anyway, yeah, this is warm flush and I'm gonna put this on while I talk. So I was not expressing any kind of frustration or anything about it. I was like, okay, you know, here's a link because I had already uploaded it with those edits and I had like scheduled it to come out on Monday. And so instead I just unscheduled it and made it unlisted and sent it to them. And they're like, you know, they were doing their best. They're like, we're going to try and, you know, get the brand to review it and approve it over the weekend so that you can stay on schedule. And I was like, okay, great. So <laughs> then I got an email right when I woke up this morning. Look at that color, by the way, come on. And it would be even more pure if I weren't already wearing, you know, a very highly pigmented foundation. So bear that in mind too. It's really like translucent. It's super, super pretty, like from a formula and color standpoint. So I get this email, they're like, hey, thanks for turning around those edits so quickly, but the brand has put an indefinite freeze on all content. So like, you can't put the video out. And I was like, what? Like, what do you mean? You know? And of course I feel like their hands are tied, but at the same time, I'm like, am, am I getting paid? I did a lot of work. Like that's a lot of work. And as y'all saw, because spoiler, the video did come out, it was including a bunch of products that 
I had bought with my own money for a review and like that was a video that needed to go out because I, you know, put my time and energy into making a video that included a bunch of products that I was going to review regardless of the sponsorship. And so I emailed them and I was like, can I just like edit the sponsorship out, you know? And like I never heard from them or at least as of now I haven't heard of them. It's 11 a.m. But I was like, the videos the videos got to go up i just kind of wanted to explain it because i know that the, like the intro was awkward and stuff and it's because i had to like cut out a lot that would have made a lot more sense in terms of continuity but you know it was no longer a sponsored video and like these are some of the frustrations like it was already a week late in terms of when I actually had the video done and then they just tell me that like I can't do it at all <laughs> any hoodles that's why Monday's video was kind of awkward. I feel like the rest of it was fine, but like the intro was really weird. <laughs> I was like, this is the best I can do, I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm just dibby dabbing this because we did end up with full coverage, so it does end up kind of like blank looking, you know? So I'm taking, this is the BK109 by the way, and the other reason that I was thinking about doing a, the wedding tutorial finally is because BK just came out with a collaboration that includes false lashes and they sent them to me like I don't own false lashes and I would never wear false lashes on a regular basis but I wore false lashes to my wedding because they're really great for photography like they you know your eyelashes kind of disappear from far away and so it's all about kind of like making those features noticeable on camera so I do want to do that so anyway again I'm adding that color back in because we're all kind of blanked out but like the way that that cream looks, like the finish of it on top of the foundation is just so lovely. Oh, it's so pretty. And then I am gonna go in with that powder blush once everything kind of gets a chance to set down a little bit, but I want to do my eyes. So they sent a couple of eyeshadows, but one of them is blue. This is the one exception to everything going together, and this is from the shade, uh, from the shade, from the brand uh, Flavado and Albedo, which I had never heard of before, but I, uh, Elle Essentially, who I follow on Instagram, just did an in-depth review that I ran across yesterday. So it was like, the name was really top of mind, and then I opened this box, and I was like, whoa, like, cool. So it's this really beautiful blue shade, but, you know, that's while absolutely gorgeous it's just not gonna fit into today's look and but you know if you're looking for like a really beautiful like robin robin's egg blue yeah kind of it's just it's really gorgeous it's got a, a really nice coolness to it so there's that and it comes in a tin which is really cute you know that's just cute i like that a lot but Oh my gosh, when I saw the manifest for this order, because they had like a QR code where they were like, you know, here's everything in the box. And I saw that this was on there. I was like, thank you so much because I have been meaning to order this for so long and it just keeps falling to the bottom of my list. Bodyography, this is a brand I've been meaning to try for so long because their swatches online are so gorgeous. And this is like the exact packaging as the Hourglass Scattered Lights. And it does look like the Scattered Lights when you look at it, but it's not. It's the smoothest foil you've ever seen. It's not trying to be like wildly shifty or anything. It's a very like skin native color for me, but it's that almost chrome smoothness to the finish. Is my husband whistling? Is he possessed? I've never heard him whistle in my life. I didn't even know he could whistle. Anyway, I'm gonna start with this basically all over and then I'm gonna use a little bit more of that blush cream to finish it out. And then and we'll do a couple other things. But this is just, it's you gotta see it on its own. Also, oh, y'all, Lisa Eldridge, this is like, this has been the best platform I have ever partnered with. They have every brand, they're like pretty new on, you know, in the space, but there are brands that you can't monetize through like your links through um, their website. You have to do it through like a third party because their individual like brand website won't have a, an affiliate partnership with anybody. And this affiliate uh, aggregator, seems to just know exactly which brand. So it's like, 
now people can monetize Thrive, for example. I used to be like one of two people who could monetize Thrive, like on the whole internet, and now other people can. Hindash, like through Hindash's website, Lisa Eldridge, Victoria Beckham, Gen C, Jones Road, like all of these brands that like did not have ways of monetizing their links before are now not only on this platform, but you can communicate with the brands. You can like chat with them. I'm like, this is the, and it's the easiest platform to use. I know this is like speaking to no one right now because like nobody, people who watch this don't care about me being able to talk to brands, but like it makes it so much easier. And all that to say, like that's how I got some really, really great PR to be able to share from Victoria Beckham after buying every single thing she put out for years with my own money. Same goes for Lisa Eldridge. So Lisa Eldridge, as y'all probably know, you know, sent me all of her eyeshadow palettes and I got to do that full series on her eyeshadow palettes when they came out and that was through Instagram. But at the same time, I had been talking to her about doing, you know, her starting an affiliate program. By the way, there's affiliate programs and then there's discount codes. Not every affiliate program has a discount code. Most of them don't actually. And so affiliates is just like our ability to monetize a link. It doesn't change the cost of what you buy. It just pays us like a little percentage anywhere from like two to I don't know, upwards of like if a brand is like really throwing it at you, sometimes it'll be like a 100% commission for like two days or something. But most of the time it's like between like, I don't know, 2% for like House of Siage, right? Because their stuff is so expensive. But then there's brands like, you know, Kosa's that'll do like 20% sometimes, that kind of thing. Merit loves to do like 30%. So anyway, I'm just giving y'all a peek behind the curtain here. But Lisa Eldridge, like I had, I had basically messaged her on Instagram and I was like, are y'all ever going to do an affiliate program? And she's like, uh, stand by, you know, we're working on it or whatever. And not only has she like, you know, reached out to me since then, like I said, and like sent me some awesome stuff. And they, they just, what, what I'm getting around to is that they just sent uh, all of the new shades as well as some other stuff, but all the new shades of the liquid Lorax. I would put them on my eyes right now, but like they deserve their own video. Do you know what I mean? Like they're just, they're so good. And I've loved that formula for so long. So that, and they like checked back in with me after like the start of the year. And they were like, how are you feeling about the affiliate program? Like, is it easy to use? Like they wanted my feedback and I was like, this is so nice, you know what I mean? Like to have, it feels like you're just communicating with humans and they email me every time, not, not Lisa Eldridge, but like um, the, this, this platform, Shop, Shop My Shelf, they like email me every time a new brand comes on and like it's a person. I can be like, this is amazing. And they're like, thanks, no, no, no. I got a handwritten note in this box that was like, thank you so much for using our platform. And I was just like, why wouldn't I? It's so good, <laughs> you know? So anyway, that's me gushing about the difference between affiliate platforms, because these are the things that like actually really matter in my life. So that's the bodyography. This is the shade Celestial, which makes perfect sense. It's just a really lovely, you know, chromey, foily peach. Oh, it's so pretty. And I feel like everything kind of falls into this like, warm, peachy, rusty kind of color story here. So I'm going to go back in with that blush stick, everywhere stick kind of thing. And I'm gonna use that on that same brush probably. It really doesn't have to be precise because it's cream. And I'm just gonna kind of put some of that here and get like an instant eye look. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Isn't that nice? Look at that side to side. You'd think I spent a ton of time on that and it just isn't so. It is always easier to work with colors that are really similar to your skin tone, you know? And that's why this has been like an instant holy grails box. That's what I'm calling it. But do you see how as that foundation is kind of cooking on my skin, it's just starting to look like better skin instead of being so I don't know, like mattified. I, I think that it's really, really nice. I love how secure it feels. It's very lightweight and it feels really like locked on. I hate that molten feeling of like your foundation is just gonna kind of drool off your face if you, you know, do anything. This just feels really secure. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is use this. I, man, whew, I love these. I love this formula. This makes me so happy that I now have five of these. We're going for a full set. <laughs> 
So yeah, again, this is the Armes Redimension Hydra Powder Blush in Pomegranate Fizz. All of these, I feel like, could double as eyeshadows. That's how like beautifully pigmented and like soft they are, you know? The way that they go on the skin, they just add this beautiful blur. But I can take a big fat brush like this, like the 103, and just dab it like that. And actually, that might be a, that might be a little much. You can see it still on the end of the brush and just work kind of on the high point right there. Oh, look at that. And it makes it so that that cream blush almost behaves like a bronzer, you know? Because we're working with colors that are just so like naturally occurring in my skin. A little on the chin. Doot, 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 doot. Beep, boop, 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 boop. You know, and this is one of those like they'll bury me with this blush situations because it just takes so little to get the effect. And you can see it does have a little bit of a nice, like it's not a color shift, but it just catches the light a little bit differently. And this is going to be fun. So this is something that I feel like really enhances the look and it's not new to this, but it's just something that I cannot put down and I've been loving so freaking much lately. And another one where they'll bury me with it because I use so little of it at a time, but I just, oh, I love it. So this is the Hindash Color Fluid in Thorn. And lately, especially like with this look, I think it looks incredible with this look, I will do my typical line with this and then I'll take something a little bit fluffier, but still precise. And I'll like use it as a shadow in the crease. So let me show you. I'm grabbing it on an A505 from BK and I'll put that right really close in. Obviously not all the way across. I shouldn't say obviously. Only obvious if you are not new to my channel because I don't want my eyes to look closer together. So I don't line my whole eye. I just line the outer portion and then we're gonna use a little bit of this on A207 and I'm gonna take and like push it so that it kind of makes a nice little arc on the outer V. Use that to kind of pick a little more product off the lash line and blur it a little onto the lid and then a little bit up into the outer crease. I'm telling you, I don't know how he did it, but like these are the most cooperative little art supplies. That's the best way I have found to put this. It's just, it's an art supply. So I can even take a little more of it, just on the tip of the brush like that, and just stick it like right there where I want the most depth. And when it shears out, it stays really true to tone. So you don't end up with like gray. I feel like it's nice and warm. I feel like Hindash really is passionate about like there always being warmth in a brown because I think that he's really sensitive to the difference between a deep brown and a gray also, you know? It just, absolutely like lights it up. And so then I can take what's on the brush still and enhance the actual lash line itself a little bit, but it stays so soft and blurred. And what you see me doing there is I'm actually taking this really skinny brush, it's like skinny this way, you know? And I'm actually tucking it right there in the corner of my eye so that I'm like defining that area because I don't put mascara on my lower lashes and so sometimes there can be this gap right there that's like light shining through. And so if I take the brush and just make sure that's darkened, it's not as distracting. So let's do it on the other eye. That's an example of it really soft. You know, if I hadn't kind of gone in with that second dollop, but I'm gonna go with the second dollop because you do the same thing on both sides, you know? Tuck it right into this spot right here, because that's like kind of where that shadow exists when my eyes are open. And wiping a little bit of it off, because <laughs> it's like, I kind of want to stay with this really like soft blend. You can always add more. And 
also something cool about this stuff, again, I don't know how he did it because the texture of the color fluids doesn't stiffen your brushes. Like when it dries on your brush, you can still wipe it off. So interesting because like that can ruin a brush if you use something that is like, you know, oil based and it dries or something. Like this, I feel like whatever it is, it still has, I don't know, flexibility or emollience to it that I can like pick a powder shadow back up with this brush after doing this with a liquid and I'm not gonna like hard pan my shadow, you know? It makes a huge difference to just know that you have that freedom. So then I'll again, take what's left on the brush right there on the skinnier brush and kind of redefine. Y'all, I wish you could hear what's going on in my head right now. You're probably like, oh, Khaki's just thinking about the color wheel. No, dude, you wanna know what's in my head right now? Elmo's gonna share with you. All of the Christmas things we do. Yeah, there's a Nutcracker by Sesame Street that's Elmo and Tango's Nutcracker. And it is so permanently stuck in my head. I'm using a little more of the bodyography here. Get a little more sheen back. And Simon wants to watch it. I mean, constantly. It's, it's called like, you know, Nutcracker featuring Elmo and Tango, but he calls it Elmo Tango Elmo. Anyways, he goes, Elmo Tango Elmo. Elmo Tango Elmo. And we're like, okay, Elmo Tango Elmo. And then, so that he can have it in the car, my husband recorded it on his Tony box. So he can bring his Tony box in the car with him and still have Elmo Tango Elmo. Like, it's a religion at this point. And that's what I have in my head right now. Did I belabor that way more than was necessary? A hundred percent. But I love how it looks. Isn't that nice? It's so soft. So soft. Okay. They did send me a brand new tube of the EXA mascara, which I actually really like. It's kind of one that happened to me maybe at the wrong time because I was like so overwhelmed with other things and like other mascaras coming out and stuff. It's a really nice as far as like a clean mascara is concerned. It's nice, like longish wearing, rinses off really easily. It's a kind of funny effect because like, I don't know, I hear people say that a lot of times you can tell what a mascara is going to do to your lashes just by looking at the brushes. You're like, oh, it's going to make my eyelashes look like the brushes, like the bristles. But this one kind of like doesn't build quite as much actual material on your lashes, which is nice because it can be kind of a slower process for people who get overwhelmed easily by like, you know, Thrive or something, the way that the Thrive tends to just kind of like glop up on your lashes really quickly if you're not careful. So like, I don't mind that because it's just such a quick process, but this is super like, you have a lot of control. You can just, you know, really elongate and get something super fluttery and it's very lightweight extraordinarily lightweight. EXA is Credo's house brand. So I do think that they have their own website, but they were created by Credo. But like, look how much control I have over that. And it does dry fairly quickly, but it also layers really easily, far better than a tubing mascara would. It's not a tubing formula, it's just a regular mascara formula. Oh y'all, I've got some stuff coming in the mail. I asked for the bronzers from Jones Road before I do an updated review. But since they're on this affiliate platform, they offered to send me some of their newer stuff. And with it came a fresh tube of their mascara. That is one of the best freaking like regular wash off mascaras I've ever used in my life. Now, good luck washing it off. It's really, really hard to actually like get it all off because it's so much bulk on your lashes. It's so gorgeous and like chunky and incredible, but if you can't wear a tubing mascara and what you want is like the most impact on your lashes and a long wearing formula, it's a clean formula, it doesn't smudge. There's a reason that it like sold out a gajillion times on TikTok. Like it's unlike a lot of things on TikTok, you know, it actually lives up to the hype. All right, let me throw some brows on here. I'm gonna use my authored brow gel and then the uh, Kamiko clear brow gel. We're not gonna draw them in today because I just, I like the way that they look when I can like see through them lately. Hannah pointed it out recently in a video. She was like, I feel like it's such a normal thing for creators when you're making a video, it's like there's a certain brow you do on camera, right? And it being three steps where you like pencil it in and then you mousse it and then you, you know, use a, 
a gel or whatever, like that's totally commonplace to see in a video. But in, like she was going out to dinner in real life or going to a friend's house for dinner and she's like, it can be kind of a little much in person. And I do feel like it's a slippery slope the way that kind of we get used to optimizing every like feature of our faces with like 10 different products. And it kind of ends up a little bit draggy, you know, kind of like old school drag makeup, like, you know, Jaclyn Hill kind of thing. And, you know, you do sometimes sort of forget that like, like that that's not normal for everybody kind of thing. And I, I just, I was like, I feel that way about my brows. Like I kind of got a hard look at my brows and like the wrong lighting at one point. And I was like, drawing my brows in with a pencil first, like looks great under lights, but it really looks unnatural in person. And so I don't have the wherewithal to like actually draw my brows in with a teen, teeny tiny little pencil. I just don't. But this does the job. This does enough for me. And I always say this, but the Authored Brow Gel, it's just a larger container of boy brow. I like it a little bit better than boy brow, but I mean, if you have boy brow, like you don't need this. And I'm gonna powder just a touch underneath my eyes because I just feel like it's a little bit reflective. And Hourglass actually included this brush. This is their, I forgot what it's called. It's a, it's a powder brush, I think. So I'm gonna use the bigger side, I guess. I'm gonna use my Make powder in Translucent Fair. And yeah, just divvy dab that just to change the texture underneath my eyes a little. Obviously we're not in need of coverage because we have plenty, but I'm gonna use that kind of here and there. Might even do a little highlighter moment. I have and have been enjoying the Lotus one from Shantikai just cause it's so subtle. So I'll use the other side of that brush and I like it kind of on the outside of my lip here. And a little bit there. Um, I'm not sure it really like needs to be a whole lot of other places. I just kind of want to enhance what's already there. That's nice. I'm gonna do my clear brow gel. I feel like all these little steps at the end, I'm just talking as much as I'm doing them because they're just so quick. It's like a bunch of teeny tiny finishing touches. This is the Kamiko Brow Sensei and it just makes things look defined again after I've put like the color on. And then redemption for Hourglass, okay? And I don't mean redemption from <laughs> all of their like, you know, not wanting to be inclusive with their shade ranges thing. Like that's not my redemption to accept. I'm talking about how their unlocked lipstick in my last video frustrated me because the color was just so different from the swatches online. And I was, I had my hopes so high that it was gonna be like a lipstick version of Provoke because that's like my favorite color from them. But I've been really wanting to try these for a while. So this is, they don't write the name of the product on the actual product. I'm obviously not an expert in like the entire Hourglass product offering, but this is one of their like, I guess newer kind of lip balm deals, right? It's a lot like the M Cosmetics one or the uh, ones that I just tried from um, About Face. And you know, you kind of crank it up like that and it's really, really soft and glossy, but it has like a good bit of pigment to it. And this is in the shade Trace. Just watch. It doesn't have a scent. It just kind of smells like wax, which is a little bit interesting. It's a strange choice. I don't mind the scent in uh, lipstick and I also don't mind the smell of this, but it's just, you know, it doesn't feel luxurious that it doesn't have any kind of scent to it, but it also like you wouldn't notice that it doesn't have a scent unless you literally stick it in your nose to check. This is what I'm talking about, how like this entire box seemed to have like a North Star of a certain color profile that they chose everything by. And I still had some of that RMS on, forgot about that. So it went on like extra glossy, but it does actually have a nice amount of grip to it. It does feel kind of like a liquid lip balm. It's just lovely, 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 lovely. I do think that I want just like a little tiny bit of contour to like blend my hairline right there. Ooh, I forgot, it's a little bit minty. So uh, beware of that if that's something that bugs you. I personally am obsessed with a minty lip color because it's going to plump things and I love that. I love that sensation. Elmo oh, is gonna share with you all the Christmas things we do. Do, 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 do. I 
don't know where my Charlotte Tilbury one went. All right, well, we're gonna use Natasha Denona. I don't think that this is even, this even exists anymore, but we're gonna use the Natasha Denona contour. Oh, it just adds a little something something, doesn't it? Blends right up into the hairline. Very, very nice. Oh, and it kind of adds a little bit of mattification. If you're going to use a matte contour, I highly recommend using it last because of just the way that it changes, the way that the light hits. And you can manipulate the whole look with it because I can kind of go all the way around my hairline. Y'all, I mean, it's almost like not worth doing like the quick review of everything. I'm still going to, but do you know what I mean? Like everything just went so swimmingly. <laughs> it's just not often that I get done with a whole face of makeup and I'm like, well, that was just perfect. Okay, that was just great. I'm gonna add a little more blush on this side. Anyway, yes, let's review here. The RMS primer, absolutely lovely. Really great for gripping. It's kind of like a creamier, more serum base instead of almost aloe feeling version of like a hydro grip from Milk. And I found it to be really hydrating and it didn't make things go on like a mask the way that hydro grip does. So it actually like sunk in a little bit better. I recommend this. I recommend this a lot. I like it. Oh, and the sunscreen did not complain at all underneath my makeup and behaved so much like the reverse emulsion. I will be interested to see how much this costs if it's like a million dollars. Let's see, bloom effects. Okay, that's, I didn't, I just wrote blue ferrets. Tulip dew. She's not cheap. She's $65. Okay, so, you know, we'll see if I can get y'all any kind of discount code with them, I'll message them, but it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. So anyway, there's that. Finally, Iris and Romeo comes out with something that I can absolutely stand behind with all of my energy. I mean, God, is that gorgeous. So beautiful. And I think I got rid of the one from Lila B, but like, I wanna say that that's like, pretty much the shade that it was. So if you were a fan of that Lila B one, I think that that's gonna be a really good one for you. Hey y'all, I actually couldn't help myself and dug through all of my like recycling makeup and stuff and I found it and I swatched it against some stuff for comparison because I, I just needed to know. So here we have, this is the one from Iris and Romeo that I was referring to. And then this is the Lila B one, which the shade is actually called Be Lovely in the Divine Duo Lip and Cheek. This little teeny tiny thing was like $50, but it's still really beautiful, you know, but it's a lot more matte and it's a little bit more pink. It's actually a dead ringer for Maple from Salt New York, which is this. And then I thought that y'all would probably be curious to see Coco because like when you take this out, this looks br pretty brown compared to this, but like Coco is so brown from Salt New York that I wanted to show y'all kind of, uh, you know, something on the other end of that spectrum. So this being the Iris and Romeo again, that shade is called Warm Flush. I mean, it's just right there in the middle of those just skin richening shades. And what I actually really like about it is it's a lot more texturally similar to the Salt New York in the sense that like you can see my skin through it. So it's going to work for more people. Whereas this one being as matte as it is, and also being as kind of opaque as it is, like it's actually, you know, giving my skin some coverage. This is less likely to work on more people. Not that you could get it anymore anyway, but uh, I guess my point is like, these are going to, all of these are going to be more, you know, skin tone friendly across the board. So hopefully that's helpful. Don't be intimidated by this pomegranate fizz shade that I put on my cheeks because the way that it can kind of like wash onto a makeup look just adds this like beautiful breath of like rich warmth without completely overtaking the look. I think that that's what like the shimmer does is it allows it to go on really sheer, you know? Sheerly. Like they're pigmented, don't get me wrong. They're not dusty. <laughs> but the way that that went on on top of like a cream, I went matte foundation and then a cream and then put a powder on top and nothing gummed up and it didn't grab or anything. That's a winner in my book. The Bodyography, really glad that I finally got to try this and I'm really glad that, woo, that they sent me one that is in such a wearable, usable 
versatile shade for me because I can, I mean, honestly, I could find a reason to use that anytime I'm kind of like blanking on what to do with my eyes. It's just so gosh darn flattering, you know? And it's really, really easy to work with. I just put that on with the cream, like I said, just the cream blush. And then the, I mean, obviously this isn't part of the haul, but I just, I love this stuff so much. The Hindash color fluid. I mean, it's just, it just does whatever I ask it to do. It's like a trick deck of cards. You know what I mean? I'm just like, what was your card? Yeah, I got that. Like it's, it's amazing. It does way more than I expect it to. Let's do a little bit of finishing spray here. Tula. Mmm. 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 I love her. Love her. Oh my gosh. I feel so beautiful. Okay. Uh, what else? The Exa Mascara, I do really enjoy this. It's in a really nice component too. It's really heavy and luxurious feeling. And I think you get a butt ton of products. You get 10 milliliters or 0.34 fluid ounces in comparison to like my Thrive. Thrive always has like the most in it. So 0.38 ounces. So almost the same amount as the Thrive. So yeah, I like that one a lot. It has a very different appearance from any other mascara that I have. It just has like kind of a, a lightweight, it does this, nah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what you want your lashes to do, nah. That's what it does. And the only other thing I think was that lip color. And like, this is one that I wouldn't necessarily have picked out for myself and bought it like, you know, online because I'm always aware of the tendency for a color like that once it actually gets on my skin to go quite orange, but I just lucked out because it's got the right amount of like a neutral brown to it that once it gets on my lips, any warmth that's in there is just kind of like balanced out by the coolness of my lips. And it's a lovely texture. It's a lovely amount of actual color in it. I mean, I know that this is kind of a one note review, even though there's so many things here, but like, I just was blown away by how these are all just stars. Like these are all just star products. And I think that that's why they put the box together the way that they did, you know, it's just because they were like, these are all products that are like the marquee products of this brand currently that are gonna blow your mind and mind blown. So that's the vibe today. A very easy face of makeup to love, honestly. And I am just so grateful that I get to try some of these brands and some of these products from brands I already love that I hadn't gotten to, you know what I mean? That I just hadn't gotten around to yet. I feel like it really rounds out uh, a lot of the stuff that I feel like I've been missing lately. So there's still plenty more coming, y'all. Don't worry. I'm gonna do like a top shelf soon where I actually talk about my whole skincare routine and everything. Also, I'm on Patreon now. That's where we're doing the vlogs and it's just become a really, really amazing kind of like more intimate community over there where, you know, we actually have conversations and joke around and stuff and talk about our week and everything. So uh, definitely go over there and join. It's a pay what you want kind of thing. So, you know, feel free to join or don't join or what have you, but I appreciate all of y'all being here, being there and just being present with me. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please do give it a thumbs up. If you made it all the way to the end of the video and you're not yet subscribed, you should probably subscribe because most of my videos are like this. <laughs> if you liked it, this is just gonna be what's on your feed. So I will throw another video up here that I think that you're going to enjoy if you liked this one. And I love y'all and I will see you in the next one. Bye.